I've never seen anything like that. What the actual... What is it? When I look in the sky at night nowadays, I've got the knowledge that I didn't have before. I don't know what that was. That there's something out there and it's real. When this whole thing started, I tried to tell people about it. No one believed me, but now I do have evidence. Some of this is gonna be hard for me. <clears throat> they encountered something over the sky. Most sightings of UFOs can be explained. Oh my gosh. Only a small percentage can't be. It was giant, quiet, and it was amazing. Within less than a second, cross is right in front of me. Poof, and it's gone. And then, bam, the New York Times story, it changed everything. <clears throat> this is it. This is when the government is going to reveal the truth. Oh my God. It was a bombshell, right? That's what it was. Whether you accept it or not, some people actually saw this stuff. People are actually going to believe us now. Imagine if it was acknowledged officially that UFOs exist. <laughs> Our own divisions would suddenly feel so much smaller. It was dark money. Even members of Congress don't know it's there. This is too big to turn away from. There's something in our skies, and we don't know what it is, but there's something coming. The world needs to get ready for what's about to happen. Shalom. First thing and foremost, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Grey Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the whole full life. No one's in the gospel, bro. I love them. The standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Reverend may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson. Um, the brother Amawan Gabar had did a lesson on his new series called The UFO, which is this the official trailer. Um, it's a Showtime documentary series when all the uh, so-called declassified reports of so-called UFOs are being reported on and spoken about because this phenomenon that we've been seeing recently within the last couple of years or so, they began to make their presence known. All right. And now while the world was blinded and oblivious to what's getting ready to happen, uh, pretty much uttering the statement or echoing the statement that the Edomite just said. He said that um, there's something that's getting ready to happen in this world. And it's going to be huge, you know, in a roundabout way. So they have some idea that something is getting ready to come upon this earth that they've never seen before. And technically it's already here. I remember a couple years ago, I'm going to say, uh, I think it was late 2017 or 2018, uh, Esau even put out a report talking about a fleet of chariot resurgence that was within so many, uh, I think it was like a few years from Earth, they was expecting this phenomenon to hit, I believe like within 2018, 2019, and that's when we started seeing um, a huge influx of chariots, and Esau has brought out the information years ago, and this is before they quote unquote declassified it, so uh, that being said, man, that chariots allow Esau to pick them up on radar. You know, and especially for the edification of the ministry, because I can I can say that the last couple of years I haven't I've never seen this many chariots. It's to the point that you know I can literally walk outside and look up and I can see a chariot, man. All right, and it's beautiful though because of the spirit. And I'm gonna add a little clip on to it later on, but um, I help her at the camp, man. Um, you know, edifying. You know, uh, beautiful sister, whatever. You know, she she helps us out through the spirit. When she's able to, and um, you know, she gives us, you know, uh, goods and so forth, things to forward the ministry. You know, like the scriptures say, you know, that's what the you know women supposed to do. And uh, she's been around for some years, and you know, she helps when she's able to. And uh, we got some equipment. We got these night vision goggles, and Lord's will. I'll do a little excerpt clip on it later on, just to show you what it is. It's, it's, it's a night vision goggle, and uh, they could pick up on chariots when you can't even see them especially on those dark and hazy nights. Pretty nice piece of equipment uh, that was distributed to the camp so we can see these things and increase our faith. So the water for that. But um, anyway, uh, they was talking about a, a fleet of chariot resurgence 
that was going to be within Earth's atmosphere within so many years. And what are the chances that this has happened? And like I said, it's because the chariots, they're allowing themselves to be known. They're not hiding themselves, okay? And though this was just the classified, I want to say last month sometime, Esau's been knowing about this since the 50s, the 60s. Okay, this isn't anything new. This isn't nothing he just found out about. This isn't nothing he just decided to conjure up. He's been knowing about it. But the fact that they've been showing themselves and the prophets mainly have been bringing out this information, he didn't have a choice but to declassify it because, hey, you know, and, and it's his time to try to capitalize off something that's going to be his utter destruction. And these Edomites, they're afraid. They're in terrible fear because they know somewhere in the back of their spirit, they know that they have a judgment coming. Okay, Most High is putting it on their spirits to know that they're going to have to pay for the atrocities that committed against the Lord's chosen people, which are the Israelites, predominantly you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, with the uh, few confusion of face in here in between that look like other nations. All right, so it says the UFO is a four part docuseries from J.J. Abrams, and J.J. Abrams is good for going into stuff. I think he did the movie, uh, what is it, Signs, if I'm not mistaken. He's done a lot of movies that deals with chariots, and he's like an insider, so he has a scoop on these uh, uh, phenomena, so to speak. So, you know, if anybody would direct the documentary dealing with this type of uh, information, it would be him, because this is what he goes into. His name sticks out. He's kind of like uh, M.H. Uh, however you pronounce uh, Shalaman, how you pronounce his name, but he's into like the mysterious UFOs and, you know, uh, the crop circles and all that stuff. So uh, anyway, it says here, it says, it says exploring a fascination with unidentified flying objects. And the reason why Esau was reporting on it is because it's nothing he can do to stop it. Like uh, the brother put out a graph chart on the chariot sightings in the world. And by far, America has the most by far sightings than any other uh, uh, nation on the planet. All right. And mainly these chariots are popping up in Edomite territories, America, New Zealand, the UK, France, uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Greece, Germany, all these Edomite led nations. Uh, the chariots have been making a known presence, even in Russia. You see, so the scriptures say that it should enter into the house of the thief and it should remain in it and consume it with the timber, thereof, you know. So anyway. It says here, and with the clandestine influence, the American government, which the clandestine services pretty much goes into the CIA. That's pretty much the uh, operations unit, their double O's or their spies. But it says, and with that clandestine influence, the American government, lucrative private companies and the military may have in shielding the truth behind extraterrestrial phenomenon to further their own agendas. OK, and it's coming on Sunday at eight o'clock. August 8th, 9 8th Central Time on uh, Showtime. All right. And they have a free showtime, a, a free showtime trial. If you brothers wanted to, you know, see it or post a link to it. Me, uh, I have a fire stick so I can order it or get it on there, Lord's will. So, um, Lord's will, I'm going to check that out and hopefully we can do, you know, a few lessons on it whatsoever. Because um, this information, it, it's, it's coming out. It's interesting. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to loop this video. It's a program that's called iMovie, but I haven't really figured out all the technicalities of this phone yet. Because, you know, honestly, <laughs> I just get the device to really record the videos and stuff. But uh, I want to find out how to loop these videos and start adding certain effects to it. That way, you know, brothers get a visual of what's going on because Jake, they're visual. You know, Jake, they have short attention spans. But when it's something that appears to captivate their interest, then they lock in. That's why with Jake, man, you got to hit the point and hit it quick because Jake, they listen and then they off on something else. You know, Jake suffered from 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 attention deficit <laughs> disorder. We all suffer from it, see, even myself. But anyway, so uh, I got a precept here. This is the book of Habakkuk 1, and I'm going to start at verses 5. It says, Behold, ye among the heathen in regard and wonder marvelous, marvel, marvel, marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it be told to you, okay? And that work is happening, all right? It's being told, but Jake is still in disbelief, you know? I remember one video that came out about a year and a half ago when the chariots popped up on some Jakes, man. This one nigga said, oh, man, we getting evaded, man. We got to get the guns. Like, come on, dog. 
There's many videos that the prophets have been pumping forth about the chariot and so forth, man. You mean to tell me that you still don't understand what it is? Like I was talking to my landlord uh, last week, man, and um, she claims she's a big conspiracy theorist. But back of my mind, I'm like, why the hell did you get the jab? <laughs> you know, but uh, she was telling me about this uh, UFO <clears throat> uh, channel. Uh, she gave me the name of it, but honestly, I didn't really understood. I just couldn't understand. I'm like, what do you? What's the name of it? And, and she's so scatterbrained to the point I asked her to repeat it three times and it still wasn't clear. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I get it from another time. But she's into all the chariots and the UFOs and all this other stuff, you know. So I said that to say this in Missouri, Missouri and Kansas City predominantly is a big hotbed of chariots. OK, they have literally literally group and meet groups that come up together and they meet and they see and they go look for these things. And through the spirit, man, hey, we may just crash one of the events. <laughs> nah, I'm just talking shit, man. Because even if we went out there and told them what the chariots are, they still not going to believe it. Because when you take things from a biblical perspective and tell the people, they're going to feel like it's outdated information. When we can go right into the Bible and, and prove what these things are. Okay, we can prove that they're the angels of the Lord and that they look like us. And they can take on a form of different beings. They can shapeshift. They can sit in and out of portals. Okay, because you got to understand the earth is surrounded through portal portals and wormholes. Okay, underneath the water, even in the heavens. Because when you go into the story of Jacob's ladder, Jacob's ladder is dealing with a portal directly to the spirit world. And that's why it says he behold and he seen angels ascending and descending from the heaven. Because that ladder represents a portal to the different realm. And the chariots that are able to sift in and out of these different portals. That's the reason why uh, uh, they can disappear like that. Like when we were in Chicago, man, and the brothers out here, when they had uh, the account of the chariots, when it was pretty much a, a long fleet of chariots, man, they were coming because Chicago was east of Missouri. So they were coming west from us. OK, and uh, they were they were they were going east from Missouri and they was coming west. Uh, uh, from Chicago because they were coming directly from the west which was in Kansas City and um, brothers seen it and it was like they were going through portals and they appeared over to us and it was spiritual how we all saw that event at the same time so something big is getting ready to happen man all right so hey brothers I'm here to tell y'all through the spirit man and myself that hey when all hell breaks loose the chair is definitely the angels are definitely in place to uh, make their move you know and to help brothers to navigate through the, the difficulties and the straits that we're getting ready to face here in America. All right, because honestly, man, it's getting ready to be a lot of judgment out here and a lot of people are getting ready to be destroyed. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind. So uh, let's go to the next precept here. This is the book of Isaiah 31. And I'm going to start at verses. Uh, this start at verses uh, three. It says, now the Egyptians are men. And not the most high and their horses flesh and not spirit their horses meaning their vehicles their military uh vehicles their armies and so forth you know their fighter jets because esau he has chariots that kind of look like the chariots on the left hand side but those things can only do so much like he got stealth bombers he got b5 bombers he got a uh, you know uh, stealth planes black hawk helicopters he got all those things but those are a physical composite okay those are not spiritual which means they can be destroyed Okay, and it says here, and not spirit, and it reads, and it says, and when the Lord should stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is the hoping shall fall down, and they shall all fail together, right? Because when that war in heaven comes, okay, according to Revelation 12, hey, there's not going to be any match. The scriptures say that it was no pleasure found feeling for them, neither in heaven. So Esau has set up what he called the Space Force, which is an extension of the Air Force. They're going to have a war literally in the heavens, man, right above our atmosphere. All right. And you can see it play out. OK, they're going to be in the cusp of, of, of what they would consider space in the Earth's atmosphere. Like that demon. What was his name? Uh, Jeff Bezos. When he allegedly went to space, which technically he wasn't even really in space, man. OK, he was still within the Earth's atmosphere. So he didn't even go outside of the, the, the atmosphere, so to speak. But within that realm up there, they're going to have the war. Because Esau's uh, Air Force, man, his Space Force, they can go a little higher than that. They can go out there, but it's only so far they can go. And the angels are going to meet them, and that's when they're going to have their demise. 
All right, so it's going to be a, a hell of a show, man. It's, it's basically War of the Worlds. And Esau, like he was saying in his documentary, something is getting ready to happen that this whole world is getting ready to be taken by storm. And brothers have kept echoing this statement. And I've said it thousands of times, man. Years ago, I said, look, brothers, you're going to start seeing ships, man. We're going to start literally going out of our homes and we're going to start seeing ships over us. Okay? People are going to start to realize, like, wait a minute, there's something about these dudes. How they have connection with these vehicles, with the intergalactic beings? How are they doing this? And that's why the scripture said, and they have thy power, thy people shall be willing. Okay? Because when they see the miracles that the Lord is going to perform through us, that's when people are going to start to get curious. And that's when that, that remnant is going to really come in and be sealed. Okay? So, hey, look forward to those things. Pay attention. You know? Open your eyes up. Cherries are out there, man. I had a vision of it. I was right outside of my bedroom window inside the parking lot. And uh, it was a chariot that was over me. It was green and it, it, it surrounded my body. And it was like literally pulling me up almost. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this is a chariot. And when I saw it in the vision, I literally can see myself outside and, and, and that happening. I was in my bed sleep, but I can literally see myself outside. You know, and I, it was just a heavy thing. So, you know, even a brother lawyer, the brother like Tazawam, all the brothers, we all echo that statement. You know, ships are going to start showing themselves. It ain't just going to be little lights and so forth at a distance. These ships are going to show themselves. Okay, we're going to see the circumference. We're going to see the lights. We're going to see the glory. We're going to see them sift. And they're going to be there to minister to brothers, man. You know, and as it, that's, that's going to solidify the faith. And when that happens... There's no room to doubt no more. There's no room to be afraid when Esau comes in as a flood. Remember what Elisha said. He says there'd be more with us than with them. So yeah, they could surround your house. But guess what? You got chariots up there. You think the angels are going to let them make their move and just pick us off? Hell no. No, I'm not saying that brothers ain't going to be tried. Some brothers ain't going to get hemmed up. Yeah, that's part of the, the gospel. But regardless of that, it's going to be a standard that's going to be lifted in these days coming. Because this man is coming with great wrath. And I'm going to do a lesson on that. I went into it yesterday. But uh, the spirit want me to go a little bit more in depth. So, Lord, as well, I'll do it next. When they're talking about California and uh, New York, mainly state workers, which was over 200 or something thousand that have to get the jab or they have to be tested every week. Okay? And when you get fired for not getting it, you cannot draw unemployment. So, they're, they're, they're taking away your free debt blatantly taking away uh, your abilities to do anything. They're going to lock things back down. Okay? So, hey, keep in mind, a dark winter. Anyway, it says here, But thus says the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, when the multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he would not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. Okay, so the Lord is going to fight for us, man. It's we read it in the scriptures. You just have to want to partake in that battle, in that blessing. So, brothers, man, this ain't the time to be getting weak. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, man, it's... Look, brothers, you can't be getting weak, man. This is not the time to be dealing with, with, with the downtrodden of, of the... Look, with the mind. You got to elevate your mind, man. This is the worst time to be put out of camp or kicked out or suspended because you ain't picking up the ball. This is not the time to be in that type, to be in that mindset, you know, but hey, we understand the Lord is sifting. And it says, and as birds flying, so would the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. OK, it says defending also he will deliver it in passing over. He will preserve it. OK, so there you go, man. He's going to deliver us and he's going to preserve the elect. Remember that, brothers. Because look, when this scripture come to pass, what is this? Wisdom of Solomon 5 verses 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such that have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. It says, And when they see it, they should be troubled with terrible fear and should be amazed at the strangers of his salvation. So far all beyond what they look for. And like this devil said, a matter of fact, I'm going to try to find it again and replay it because he made a very important statement. I think it was right about, it's right here. And we don't know what it is, but there's something coming. Our real needs to get ready for.
he said, we don't know what it is, but there's something coming. What's about to happen? We rewind it. There's something in our skies, and we don't know what it is, but there's something coming. The world needs to get ready for what's about to happen. See that? <laughs> Esau knows something is coming. He said, the world needs to get ready for what's getting ready to happen. Okay, you know what? Shit, we ready through the spirit, man. We ready, we ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, that's our way out of here. We getting out of here and, and informing them ships. How the hell you think we're going to get delivered when America, when the missiles hit this place? You think we're going to take a boat or a plane and fly out of here? No, it's not going to work that way. We're going to get delivered by divine intervention, miracles, spiritual power. We're going to get delivered by the miracles the Heavenly Father's getting ready to bestow because if it wasn't an event, it wouldn't be much of a miracle. Okay, that's why it says when they see it, they should be troubled with terrible fear and should be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all they look for. So they're not expecting a bunch of uh, low life Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans to be beamed up on these intergalactic ships. They're not expecting that. They're not expecting us to be transferred into glorious beings. They're not they're not looking for that back of their mind. They know, but they like, come now, nah, you're right. That's just like the odds against you, man. It's, I remember it's like playing that game, Mike Tyson punch out. Used to be a little scrawny dude, but you beat everybody up until you get to Mike Tyson. You got to knock him out too. We the little scrawny dude, man, fighting these big heavy hitters, and they're not expecting us to win. Okay, they're not expecting it, but the victory is already written in the scriptures, and we're reading it. This is part of the victory. It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit should say within themselves. This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb and a reproach. Yeah, a bunch of niggas. Are you serious? These guys? We fools are counting his life for madness and his end to be without honor. Your family, because they feel like you're wasting your life away. Oh, he's wasting his time and ain't coat. Here you can show these guys, man. Look, the things we're seeing, the cherries popping up on us, etc. And they still scoff in disbelief. Why? Because the Most High has put a spirit of blindness on people. So therefore, they can't perceive. They can see it, but they can't perceive it, man. And they mindset, they don't even know what they're seeing. It could be anything that they're seeing, especially if we're bringing out the facts that the men of the Lord are saying this is what it is. It, it can't be what we're saying. They, it's, they're not going to allow it. You know, when we bring out the scriptures, all of a sudden it becomes open for any interpretation instead of the interpretation. You know? It says, how is he numbered among the children of the Most High? And how is his lot among the saints? They said, how is this guy? This dude? Really? Man. All right. And let's go down to verse 16. It says, therefore, shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with him, his right hand shall cover them. And with his arm, he shall protect them. And he shall take them to his jealousy. For complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemy. That's when we get those bodies. It says here, and he should put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of a helmet. And he should take his holiness for an invincible shield and his severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise and the world is Israel. Okay. It says here, and show the right Amy thunderbolts go abroad. And from the clouds, okay, as well as the drone bow, so they fly to the mark. See? Chariots. Then shall the right Amy Thunderbolt. I read that. It says, And the hailstones full of wrath should be cast as out of a stone bow, and the water of the sea should rage against them, and the flood should cruelly drown them. And yea, a mighty wind shall stand up against them, like a storm shall blow them away. And thus iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth, and ill dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. So with that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. And with that, Shalom and a Baba Ba. Look at this.